कायनातीज ये एक स्पेशल एडिशन है कायनाती चाय का आजकल काफी जरा खबरों में आया हुआ है कि प्लेनेट जो वीनस है शायद वहां पर जिंदगी के कोई आसार दरियाफ्त हुए हों तो मैंने कहा कि इस सिलसिले में मैं जरा बात करूं मेरे जो अपने प्रोफेसर थे जब मैं ग्रेजुएट स्कूल में था नाइनटीन में और जिस प्रोफेसर ने मुझे पढ़ाया ये जो सैारों के एटमोसफियर्स के बारे में तो मैंने कहा मैं जरा उनसे बात करूं तो ये जो बातचीत है वो अभी तो उर्दू में है फिर बीच में अंग्रेजी में मैं उनसे गुफ्तु करूंगा और फिर वापस से मैं उर्दू में इसका कंक्लूजन दूंगा लेकिन इसके साथ साथ एक और कायनाती समोसा इसी डिस्कवरी के सिलसिले में भी आ जाएगा और जैसे सब लोग होते हैं गलतियां करते हैं जब मैंने अपने प्रोफेसर से बात की ये प्रोफेसर मार्क मार्ली हैं तो मेरी गलती ये थी कि मैंने उनसे जूम पर इंटरव्यू किया और मैं सेटिंग्स में मेरा ख्याल था कि साइड बाय साइड रिकॉर्डिंग की सेटिंग मौजूद है लेकिन यार सबसे गलतियां होती हैं मैंने वो दोबारा से चेक नहीं किया और मेरा जो जूम था वो डिफॉल्ट मोड पर चला गया तो जरा बातचीत थोड़ी सी मुश्किल है क्योंकि वो एक स्क्रीन जब मैं बात कर रहा हूं तो मैं नजर आऊंगा और जब प्रोफेसर मार्क मार्ली बात कर रहे हैं तो वो नजर आएंगे तो उस सिलसिले में माजरत मेरी तरफ से तो आए जरा बात करें प्रोफेसर मार्क मार्ली से सो आई हैव ए स्पेशल गेस्ट टुडे दिस इज अ प्रोफेसर मार्क मार्ली एंड आई न्यू हिम बिकॉज आई टुक माय फर्स्ट ग्रेजुएट क्लास बैक मोर देन 25 इयर्स अगो विद मार्क and um and that class was one of the foundational classes in astronomy because it was about radiative processes in astrophysics uh, it sounds very fancy but uh, it is about how light travels through atmospheres and in the universe in general and how do we make sense of it because all of astronomy is based on light so welcome mark well thank you salman it's great to be here and i remember you very well as a student and you always had great questions and would come by sometimes when i was working late in the evening to discuss uh, interesting topics so it was always good and you also chatted a lot about movies i just <laughs> i wasn't going to say that <laughs> but, but the part of the thing was that we didn't used to work remote as much it was all about being in the department because that mm-hmm. when computers were so you do miss a little bit of that like you know that even without pandemic we just work at home a lot of the time. That's that's a really good point. You have less time to get to know people and and explore interesting interests. Yeah, just hanging out. And also uh what people don't know that uh, Professor Marley also speaks Urdu. No. <laughs> oh, so rest of the video as you may have noticed started in Urdu, but now we are going to have this middle section in English and we are going to come back in the Urdu part. So, what I wanted to ask uh, professor marley and um and i should mention that uh, your research deals with atmospheres of giant planets atmospheres of brown dwarfs which are also a type of stars so like stars that really didn't become stars or planets that didn't become stars or stars that were too small so you are really familiar with processes that happen in atmosphere and so of course right now everybody uh suddenly is on the bandwagon of venus and uh, i've already explained in the beginning part of the video what the foundations what the claims are that there is this phosphine detection and it might mean uh maybe that there is life on venus so since you are an expert in there so first of all what is the detection how sure are we that there is phosphine in the atmosphere of venus well phosphine if it's there is still a tiny amount of the atmosphere it's just a tiny fraction of the atmosphere would be phosphine and because it's so small it's really hard to to find it to see if it's really there and so the methods used are to look for uh the fingerprints that phosphine or other gases leave in the spectrum in the electromagnetic spectrum of the atmosphere of Venus and it's a very difficult detection it was done with radio waves and it's not even entirely certain 
that they have definitely detected phosphine. They very probably have. They see a single spectral line or a single piece of the fingerprint, but they don't even see more than one of these. And so whenever you don't have more than one spectral lines, you've only seen a piece of the fingerprint you expect to see. That said, they've been very careful. They've done everything they can. And so it's probably true that the phosphine really is there. Okay, and so, uh, and if phosphine is there, by the way, this reminds me, and, and again, I, I, I'm also, uh, I will t I've talked about it in the video and another video as well about uh, detection of methane on Mars, which was sort of like not everywhere, but in some pockets. And again, methane looking at the Earth signatures was thought that maybe it's maybe cows, but not exactly cows on Mars, but certainly something that is giving off methane. So what does phosphine, if the detection is real, can say about life or not about life? Well, if the, on Earth, phosphine is often associated with life in a very extreme or difficult environments. Um, for example, in Antarctica, they find phosphine associated with penguin colonies. Uh, in other places uh, where there's extreme life at extreme edges uh, or uh, microbial life in very difficult, difficult conditions, sometimes in sewage is where they find phosphine. And so the idea is, is that because phosphine is so difficult to make naturally, uh, and that it's on earth at least, always seems to be associate, associated with life, that in the atmosphere of Venus, it would be a, a thing, also a signature of life. Now, so, but do you think, I mean, again, uh, how sure are we, because if, uh, if I've read it correctly, I think phosphine is also in the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn as well, and there at least we don't claim that there is life on it, although Carl Sagan did sort of like speculate about like, you know, potential uh, life in the uh, sort of like clouds of Jupiter, but, but we don't usually claim that. So there are natural processes to have phosphine in the atmospheres of planets. So why Venus when there is phosphine, we are more sort of like inclined toward life? Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> right. So in, in, in Jupiter and Saturn, there are almost there are big balls of hydrogen and helium with a little bit of other compounds. And because phosphine is a phosphorus atom uh, with three hydrogens, it's natural to get phosphine, to get phosphorus and hydrogen together to make phosphine PH3. In the atmosphere of Venus, is much more oxidizing. You don't have all this hydrogen floating around. And so it's not a molecule you would expect to find uh, normally at Venus, to the extent that we understand perfectly what's going on in the atmosphere of Venus. Okay. So, so do you think uh, there is a possibility of life producing phosphine on Venus? I mean, you, you still need, I mean, I know the temperature range is okay and above the clouds, but what kind of, how would biology thrive in the atmosphere? Well, see, that's the problem, right? Is something, we, it's like we don't expect there to be phosphine. And so there is phosphine. So then you have to have some explanation. And the explanation that invokes life then has to put life in the clouds, which is very difficult. And then the clouds, the cloud particles move up and down. They fall down, they evaporate. You uh, sometimes updrafts might lift them back up. So you might have rain and then things lifting up, and you have to imagine some kind of life in these cloud droplets, which by the way, are made of sulfuric acid. And so it's very difficult conditions to even begin with, but you'd have to have some kind of process in these droplets that's producing the phosphine gas as a byproduct. And presumably a lot of other molecules that we haven't yet seen, if it really is life. And yeah, and you have to worry about the whole ecosystem. I mean, you have to create that, and there is a normal sort of like where they are getting their nutrients and, and all of those other things. So ultimately, what do you think about 
the paper. I mean, there are two components to that. And then the coverage of the paper uh, about uh, this claim for phosphine on Venus. Well, I mean, they, the, the authors have looked, you know, to, to, to go all the way to the point of saying, well, it must be life. They have to say, well, these other processes might not work. And they've tried to look at the processes as we understand them in Venus's atmosphere um, to rule them out. But the problem is we don't know all that much about Venus's atmosphere. There hasn't been a mission in, in, in a long time that has gone into the atmosphere. Um, and under exotic conditions in an atmosphere we don't perfectly understand, and there has, because, because phosphine actually is, is, can be as dangerous gas, there's not a lot of laboratory work on it. So it's very difficult to know for sure they've really ruled out all the possibilities or if there's something complicated going on that produces phosphine in a natural way. And that's where I think it's happening. I think the paper is very serious. They make a good case. Uh, they try to systematically go through. And then the second paper is about 100 pages long. And some of the other alternative ways of making phosphine that have been suggested, they give a lot of time to, and they seriously look at it. But again, it's such a complicated atmosphere. There's updrafts, there's downdrafts, there's sulfuric acid drops, there's even water clouds, uh, or potentially water droplets in the atmosphere of Venus as well. And so it's such a chemical stew of so much going on, plus the ultraviolet light from the sun. Are we really sure it's just not that we're thinking something we haven't thought of yet? Some very complicated process that is a byproduct gives the gives the phosphine. But it's these are these are serious people, and they've given serious thought to this, and they've anticipated a lot of the things that people uh, might raise questions about. Uh, and so, to that extent, it's a very impressive job. But I think that most scientists I've talked to uh, are not yet convinced including myself. So I will end with uh, a completely uh, non-scientific question. And I will ask you, OK, so and again, I, I don't like those kind of questions myself, but I will ask you. <laughs> and that is about, so if you were to give in a probability that uh, sort of like, you know, that there is, that it is life, how much would you put on? Yeah, like from what you know, do you think it's 50-50, or do you think, well, most likely it's inorganic uh, process or non-biological processes? And uh, so what do you think? My guess is maybe it's about a 5% chance. So I'd say it's better than zero. It's not entirely impossible. But I think there's just so much we don't know and so many other unknown unknowns we just don't know exactly what's going on in the atmosphere. And so my best guess is it's possible, but it's not super likely. It's maybe 5%. Oh, and, and so that gives me an opportunity to ask you one more question. And that is, so what would convince you without a probe sort of like going over there, because that would take some time. Do you think some kind of observation of the atmosphere of Venus may convince you, you know, that bring up that probability to 50% or over 50% purely from looking at from Earth. That's really hard um, because it is so hard to identify molecules. I mean, you yourself already mentioned there must be a whole ecosystem if it's really life and it's not just one molecule. There has to be a lot of other things there as well. And so finding some other uh, molecules you might expect if there was uh, microbes in the atmosphere excreting phosphine, what else would happen? What else would you need? That's the kind of thing I'd want to see uh, before I started to be, too, be, be, uh, to be more positive about it. Great. Well, thank you very much. I know you are in California. Please stay safe from fires, uh, COVID, and, and other things that that are there, but but fires are serious, and so uh, so please be safe. Well, thank you very much. It's been great talking to you. मुझे उम्मीद है कि आप लोगों ने ये बातचीत enjoy की.
और इससे आपको यह भी पता चला कि साइंस जो है वो कैसे काम करती है कि जो लोग रिसर्च में हैं वो खाली अगर कोई नया रिजल्ट आता है तो उसको ये नहीं कहते वाह चलो इसको एक्सेप्ट करें बल्कि उसमें चैलेंजेस भी आते हैं और फिर देखते हैं कि अच्छा हम और इस किस्म की चीज को किस तरह से इन्वेस्टिगेट करें तो हालांकि ज्यादातर लोग जो हैं वो एक्साइटेड हैं पॉसिबिलिटी पे कि शायद वीनस के ऊपर जिंदगी हो लेकिन जब आप एक्साइटेड होते हैं तो साथ में आपको स्केप्टिक या स्केप्टिसिज्म भी उसकी भी बेहद जरूरत होती है तो उम्मीद है कि आप इसका कायनाती समोसा जो इसी टॉपिक के ऊपर है आप वो भी देखेंगे और उसका लिंक भी आखिर में मैं दूंगा और डिस्क्रिप्शन में भी मौजूद है